no one understands the importance of data more than the people who have to collect it and clean it and reference it when they build software. Despite that, many of us in that camp are flying blind when we make decisions, or we're basing those decisions on a very, very limited data set that is easily available, particularly when we need to make decisions quickly. Now, the finance or marketing or product teams, for instance, might be very, very data-driven, but development might base really substantial decisions about how they work and what they prioritize on gut instinct. That is potentially dangerous and wasteful. And even when you get it right, if the decision is actually correct, it's very, very hard to justify, which could result in not taking the correct path uh, even when you guessed it right. In our next talk, uh, Ralf Huck from Logilica will talk about using the information in the GitLab platform to build a BI-like experience to allow us all to become data-driven developers. Let's listen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to GitLab Commit, and thanks for tuning in to our presentation today about building engineering intelligence for software delivery teams. Now, in this presentation, I'm going to go through what actually is engineering intelligence, why you might want this, and then also how you can build it yourself. So a little bit first about us. So my name is Ralph Hack. I'm the founder and CEO of Logilica. And we are a data analytics company that really has got the mission to make software management, pipeline management, and software delivery much more transparent, efficient, and also much more fun for teams to use. So let me talk about what I mean by this. So firstly, I mean, you guys probably all know this. Really, the world runs on software, and not only on software, but on software development. And software development, obviously, this important is the people behind it. So right now, worldwide, people estimate there's around 23 million software developers, uh, many more that kind of do it on a hobby level, commit code. And even in 2020, um, when you think it might have been a bit of a downturn, there's an estimation around 111 billion lines of code uh, have been submitted and over a billion commits have been made to come in code repositories. So really it's underpinning large parts of the economy and large parts of our daily lives. And a lot of this has changed, let's say, in the last year, as you might all know. Um, people starting to work much more remotely, working from home, working asynchronously. And in fact, we think that's the new normal. So there's estimations around there that around 60% of all the developers in the future will at least partially work from home. So, and that means we are also gonna work quite differently. Instead of being together all the time in an office, having interactions, and maybe learning what other people are doing more directly, it's gonna be a much more asynchronous and remote setting. Obviously, companies like GitLab that are already fully remote, might have much lesser problem about this than let's say more traditional companies that are now just feeling around how do they make this all work? And this is really one of the big questions these days. How do you make this all work? And there's a quite a number of key challenges in a setting that's more remote compared to a setting where everyone is in the same room. And I think anyone who has been sort of working remotely within the last year can probably attest to it. One of the key challenges is really to staying in sync uh, with the rest of your team members. And in fact, you're probably not staying in sync, but you're staying asynchronous with your team members. So, but then still the question is, how do you keep uh, on top of all the things that are going on? How do you keep in the overview? And how do you can still deliver and develop fast. So it's quite different from, let's say, being in the same room. And even though you don't have maybe this one-on-one um, -on -one communication all the time, you still hear what's going on. You have a chat with your colleagues and teammates, and it's really much easier to have this team feeling and moving fast. So the question is what changed once we all move remote? Well, first of all, people start to work more 
And according to studies, they only not only work more, but they only deliver the same as they did before. So in a way, productivity really has been going down. You spend maybe less time on commuting from your home to your office, but you spend more time in front of your screen and you spend more time on chasing up, you spend more time and in logging into different tools. And for sure, everyone spends more time on video conferencing. Um, and then you have maybe these one-on-ones which take up a lot of time. Now, the question is, what are some of these um, solutions to this problem? And one of the solution people have been using is throwing more tools at the problem. And to a degree, this is quite good. Let's say automation, build automation, test automation, uh, your cloud tools, you know, it makes life much easier. And probably you can work remotely these days the way you wouldn't be able even, let's say, 10 for sure longer or maybe even five years ago. But I mean, with these tools, there are also challenges that are coming. Firstly, you might have a zoo from tool of tools. Each of those tools you need to maintain, you need to set up, you need to patch. Um, there's a challenge of training people to use tools correctly. Then you probably have a layer on top about processes, about what to use and best practices and what not to use. And, you know, at some point there are diminishing returns. This means the more tools you introduce, um, you don't get necessarily much more productivity because you get lost in all the data. You've got uh, sort of a data silo maybe in the planning, then you have got coding information, you've got your testing tools, your build servers, your infrastructure and so on. And it's very difficult to communicate both in terms across tools but also in cross teams that are managing those all those tools. And to that degree, I mean, what GitLab is doing is really great, bringing all those tools together and putting them onto a platform. So basically you have got a simplified technology platform instead of a zoo or zoo of tools, you have got everything is in the GitLab world. And obviously that allows you to standardize to accelerate the onboarding of new people and also to lower your cost base. So instead of being too diverse, you kind of bring things together and uh, make it much more easier for people to onboard, um, to maintain and to get familiar and use the processes in a way that are intended. Now, the solution for this um, technology platform, we believe is only part of it. The other part is how do you then move activities through the pipeline efficiently? So let's say you start off with your type of um, development teams that want to have high velocity. They wanna chuck out features as quickly as possible. Obviously they depend on infrastructure that's repeatable, dependable, your build doesn't break too often, you can push information to live. And at the same time, you have got quality built in. And this can be coming from your testing tools, your SAS, DAS, SCA tools, and so on. But ideally, you want to optimize the whole delivery pipeline. And right now, there's typically silos. You have got the development team, you have got the build engineering team, or part of the DevOps infrastructure, and then you have the QA and the testing teams and security teams. And if any of those steps uh, break, um, the whole delivery pipeline from beginning to end breaks. And at the same time, you want to be able to have the overview, stay on top and say, OK, I want to see where are my bottlenecks. Um, I want to see you know, where I need to kind of put more attention and maybe more resources to it. And I also want to see, you know, share that information with my teams so they can get a better feeling about what's going on and feel motivated to improve because we all know if we've got a feedback loop where we can see, hey, our build doesn't break that often anymore, or hey, our team now can have a cycle time for delivery that's much lower than it used to be, it can be quite motivating. And this motivation, again, brings sort of asynchronous teams together as well. So the solution that's been coming up, and uh, it's quite new, it's probably in the last couple of years, and there's still uh, the right term to be coined uh, is engineering intelligence. 
And in a simple way, engineering intelligence is a bit like what business intelligence did for sales, marketing, business operations, bringing all the data from different engineering sources together and being able to query that data, um, being able to visualize this and see, hey, how was it going and where do we want to be and how do we improve and track that? And the reason why this really works these days compared to, let's say, 20 years ago, because we're no longer doing, in most cases, waterfall development processes where we have got long cycles, very little data, and if at the end things don't line up, we're kind of a little bit stuffed. But these days with, uh, with DevOps and DevSecOps, you know, we've got so many iterations, we've got so many data, and we've got so many chances to optimize this. And just looking at GitLab, we already have a treasure trove of data. So let's say we have got um, planning data in there. Let's say story points, issues, epics. We've got information about merge requests. We know who has been doing reviews, how often reviews have been done. We know how long it takes until somebody picks something up. And we know how long it could potentially take from your first commit through a merge request being opened, the review process being done and being merged back into the main line. We might get information from our CICD systems about build success rates, about mean time between failures if a build breaks, how long the build takes, and then information around quality, like assess, test, test coverage tools, and so on. Just imagine now you have got all this data in one pool and you'd be able to query, visualize, analyze this and maybe get alerted when something doesn't work as intended. In that way, you would be able to make much more transparent and much more data-driven decisions that are actually helping the teams to you know, accelerate and be more inclusive about what's going on. And this is really what Logilica does. Logilica does connect to existing DevOps and infrastructure tools, brings all this information together, fuses this information, makes correlation about dependencies, and then visualizes this and makes it available for drill down, down really back to the original data. So it becomes a whole data management platform. And for us, we always call this a little bit, it's the BI for software delivery teams. It really makes things visible that are otherwise not so easily visible, and it makes them transparent within silos and across silos. So for example, you can see productivity data about your teams. And I mean, not about individuals, but really how do teams perform? What's their cycle time? What's the processes? Does it work smoothly or do we need to have more resources? Do people get overloaded? Uh, information around delivery bottlenecks. Does my build break every two hours? Do I need to fix it? Does it hold up the rest of the team? Information from our SAS test and compliance tool. You know, what's our security posture? Which, you know, part of our product probably has got more security issues. If it has, do we actually drill down and reduce this or burn down? Or do we get more? And the last challenge is probably around compliance. You know, when you say, okay, let's say we want to make sure we don't ship GPL licenses or things like this, and everything goes according to our intended processes. And we do actually co do code reviews and not only claim we do them. So that then gives you much more confidence in delivery. And it also helps you to predict delivery times and being able to predict when bottlenecks are coming up or when teams need to help. So for the next couple of slides, I'd like to drill down into just one of those sections. And that's about software team management and software team delivery. And so some of the data that I already mentioned that comes out of this is everything around merge request. And one of the most critical business metrics there, especially in the agile scrum world, is around team velocity. Now, team velocity on its own as a matrix is not the holy grail, but it's one indicator coupled with a number of other indicators that gives you a good leveling where you stand and whether you're kind of running best practices or not. And I've got here some of the Logilica data we extract around cycle time. Cycle time is basically what we measure the first time to commit until you release it or you merge it back into the main branch. And in between, you have got different steps. 
Uh, these steps is obviously the time it takes for the development of that merge request to finish. Then the pickup time, how long does it take for a response for somebody picking up it for a review, running that review, and then merging it back and having the integration uh, after the approval process. And it's commonly known very efficient agile teams kind of manage to do this within a sort of 24 hours timeline. Obviously, if you're a remote team across different time zones, you know, 48 hours is probably something more realistic. Nonetheless, if it's, you know, this one spins out to two, three days or something like this, it really signifies some bottlenecks around your delivery organization. So you will see, you know, the longer it takes, the more delays and the more context, which is everyone else has to deal with. So because their merge request is not fully approved, and then somebody says, hey, can you have another look? Um, I just did the review. You probably should fix up this one. Sure thing. You jump from one topic to the next topic. You got sidetracked. You, you fix up that one. Spend another 20 minutes to get back into your current job and then move that across. So similar metrics, for example, like number of work in progress items that signifies context switches and all this information helps you to understand really how your development team and the engineering room works. So it's more than just story points. We say, okay, we managed to do three story points per developer per week or something like this. This is all good and fine, but if your processes and your sort of engineering practices are not fully set up, these story points really don't mean too much because you can do so much better and get everyone a bit more engaged and happy if things are running smoothly. Another aspect um, we at Logilica look at and I'd like to highlight is around you know, the flow of processes. So, and I've got here a chart where on the left side, um, you see uh, the flow from uh, merge requests being opened, being reviewed, approved, um, and then merge back into the main branch. But as you can see, sort of the second line from the top, these are all the merge requests that have been opened and then immediately merged uh, back into the main branch. So they completely bypass the approval and uh, the review stage. Obviously, that's not ideal. Sometimes when teams are under pressure, this can happen more often than not, but you don't generally don't want to have this and encourage that. And as a team leader or as a team manager, it's often difficult to see, yes, that data is in GitLab somewhere, um, but if you, you really need to dig into each merge request, you know, put this into your Excel sheet, see what's going on. So we believe this kind of views and this kind of automatic extraction from your existing data gives you a much better way to drive your teams and make everyone come, here, come together. Uh, similarly, on top of here, I've got a bit of what's uh, wasted work. Basically, you open a merge request and close it without ever merging it back into the main branch. And a little bit of that is natural. So because, you know, there's always things that you figure out, ah, I didn't really do it the way I should have. Or there's things that, you know, you come to the conclusion, ah, I actually, maybe I redo something or... It's really just a test commit to see if things are working and then improve of concept and then revert that again. But we have seen it in other cases where sort of this uh, from open to close um, can take up a large chunk of the team's work. And that typically means that uh, specifications haven't been done correctly. Team members haven't been trained on what they are supposed to do or what their expectation has been. And there's a lot of information around this uh, type of uh, interactions between team members as well that can become more apparent once you click into each of these sections, drill down, drill down further and get to that data. And Logilica is kind of extracting all that data, making it drillable and making you getting these insights and really understanding what's going on to bring people together. Um, another one, and that's the last one, and this one I'd like to show you is around some team insights. And really, when we talk about team insights, we mean how teams are working together, whether there's sort of conflicts because of its reviews being bounced around too much in circles or people not working together at all. What we really don't look into and don't want to see is sort of this micromanagement of individual developers. 
I think we believe that's sort of best left for uh, the one-on-one -on -one interactions. Um, but it doesn't also kind of, it's not the key of the value here. The value is about how do teams, projects, and uh, products move along the pipeline. And this is really what you want to optimize. And one aspect I've got here is a 3D demonstration or 3D visualization of your code base. So each of these uh, buildings is a file. Um, each of these platforms is a directory. And you can see you have got directories and then you've got files sticking up. And we have this here overlaid with color about those files that ever have been only touched by a single developer. Now, in general, this is not a huge problem, but if you have got too much of this, that probably means your team is not collaborating, but everyone is sort of in stuck in their own little corner. And it's very hard then if somebody leaves or you recalibre or you reconfigure your teams to actually, you know, keep things moving and pick things up. And in fact, it might be really a challenge if one of your key people who maybe has contributed a lot of code and have been done a lot of uh, commits, as we can see in this sort of tall building, and then he gets moved to a different project or something like this. And that's really is how you kind of also occur technical debt. So in the end, what we have and what we like to have is bring all this developer information together. And Logilica does this out of the box and you have got different views around productivity, team health, cycle times and so on. You can hear these kind of stand up boards as well where you see okay, how it's been going in the last week or the last two weeks. And so for our enterprise users, they can also, you know, bring in their own data, configure all this, configure the drill down, and really make it like a Power BI for development teams. And we have made the experience that it really helps in bringing down, you know, cycle time, including improving the productivity by large double digit percentage, like say 30, 40%, depending on the team and when they are. And not only that, but once you see that data, it's mentioned also for team, for the whole team, if you work together, much more of a positive experience and working towards it. Now, you don't need to come to Logilica. Um, you probably can build this all yourself because GitLab already provides you with those APIs. The APIs to access all the data, you have got GraphQL, you have got some web APIs, and can, you can really dig in or REST APIs, and you can really dig into this and build this out yourself. <laughs> Our experience is you probably don't want to, because it's a lot of time and a lot of effort to build this, and then even more to maintain this. So if you want to learn more about this, um, just contact me later. We can point you to do-it-yourself guides. Um, or just check out Logilica and then we display that for you for free, uh, especially the top level metrics. So before ending this presentation, I just want to have a quickly an outlook about what we think the future is going to hold. And really, you have seen we have got now these big data pools. And in our view, what's the next step and actually what our team is already actively working on is building smart advisors that not only tell you this is how it looks, but these are the actions you take. This is how you kind of compare to the rest of the world. And these are maybe your anomalies in, in your team and your organizations. And something happened last week, you shouldn't have a look at this. And this can't be codified typically in hard and fast rules. And it's much more important to have this sort of AI-based smart integrated and then also alert the right people at the right time. So not everything about every, mystery, uh, let's say, deadline in terms of, um, you know, blocking merge requests or every missing review needs to go to anyone in the management level or at the team level. It's, it's fine enough if the, you as a developer get notified, say, okay, I'll fix it up. And you can be much more proactive about this and you can be much more um on staying on top of it yourself and it's really not not an issue that should be raised or could be raised in a, in a sensible manner at the same time from an engineering leader point of view you want to see the trends you want to see the prediction you want to see whether you meet your timeline and this is really important and the more the teams can work autonomously the better it is for everyone and it makes it also easier to cut down on all this unnecessary communication that you sometimes have in a remote world.
So in summary, what we see as the next thing, the big thing is sort of the smart value streams that really empower development teams to work autonomously, sort of guided through visualization tools, uh, notifications. Then the connection across silos, as I mentioned earlier, not only the development team, but the DevOps team and the QA team. And then this more AI powered assistance to you know, cut down on the unnecessary labor that sometimes uh, comes with digging into tools. We want to avoid any type of micromanagement in short. So join us in GitLab for building modern delivery teams and actually remote work and working can be fun. And if you wanna check it out yourself, just click to logilica.com. You can sign up for free. We give you the main metrics for free and you can see where you stand in that delivery process. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we just wish you all the best for the end of the GitLab event.